Hey there, if you're looking to level up your drum pattern, I want to show you a simple strategy that you can use to make your drum tracks sound more interesting, exciting, and never feels like you're repeating the same thing over and over again. So if you're new, hit the subscribe button down below and let's get started. So without wasting any time, the first thing we're going to do is get the tempo of this track. Now, if you don't get the correct tempo, it's going to be very difficult for you to get great sounding drums just like this. Okay, so I'm going to select this, then come right here, right click, detect tempo. And I'm going to come to 75 to 150. Most tracks will be within this range. Sometimes if you work on like faster music, like drill, you know, trap music, you may want to come to 100 to 200, but most songs will be found here. So I'll click that, let it detect tempo. There you can see 96 beats per minute. So I'm going to click set to tempo. Now, when you bring in a song you downloaded from the internet, most times it's going to like have a little bit of lag in terms of like the count. So the easiest way I recommend for you to get to sit on the tempo is look for the very first kick you hear in the track. So I'm going to listen through. I let the water touch my knee. So you can hear that kick there because all before here was just instrument. But from here, I let the water touch my knee. So I'm going to look for that kick and then change this um, magnet icon right here. That is the snap icon. Change it to none. Then get this slip tool at the top left right here. Now this is the kick actually. So I'm going to slide this till it hits on this bar right here. That is bar five till it sits properly on it. So I'm going to sweep that in there, zoom in, make sure you're zooming all the way in so that you make sure that it laps properly. And then we need to press play. Then turn on the metronome. Can't let these people get to me. So you can hear the counts. I'm going to reduce the volume so you can hear it properly. Change it. Then go back to the pen tool. Let's listen again. Can't let these people get to me. I know you know I never drink. I'm mixing so you can hear that it sits properly, okay? So now we have the tempo correct. So the next thing we're going to do is separate the stems, okay? So I'm going to just come right here to this top left corner of the clip, come right here, and then come down to extract stems from sample. So it's going to show you all of this. Even though we're working on the drums, I recommend you extract all, but you know, you could just extract only the drums if that's all you're interested in, okay? So I'm going to extract all, then click extract, then you'll be patient. This may take a while depending on your computer. So you'll be patient. So right here, we have it all extracted. So I'm going to solo the drums. Then let's listen to it. Now you want to analyze what you can hear. Okay, do your best to analyze all the elements you think you can hear in the drums. Right here, I can hear the kick. Boom. Boom. So I can hear the kick hits here, hits here, and hits here. Now the next you also want to analyze is, you know, the next main element. I can hear a rim shot here. So I have a kick here, a rim shot here, a rim shot here, then two kicks, okay? Then what else do you hear? So I hear a shaker and another rim shot here. Then same thing here. So once you're done analyzing all the major elements, you can hear the drums, then you can start by building your own track. Now, I always advise you get the drum kit that is relevant to the style of music you're creating. In my case, I'm making Afrobeats. I already have a nice Afrobeats pack that I can refer to. It comes with B. Now, remember, our aim is not to steal everything like a copy, try to make it exactly like this, but rather to get inspiration, okay? So, in this Afro Swing kit right here, I'm going to look for a kick, come to one shot, come down to kick, then open my um, channel rack from the top right here. Now you want to listen close to hear the kick sounds. Try to understand the nature of the sound of the kick, okay? So it's punchy and it's heavy, okay? So I'm going to look for something similar. So now we have that. I can click this in, bring in the pattern. And then you want to try and trace the kick, okay? Or I recommend you use your ears to guide you instead of just trying to trace it. So I'm going to click my kick right here. So I can hear another kick right here. Feel free to expand this if yours is, too sh is looking too short. Then here. Then I can hear another one here. Then I could hear one here as well. So it basically just repeats, okay? Next, we're going to look for is a rim shot that comes close to this. 
So how does the rim shot sound? It sounds like it's kind of layered with a snare. Okay, so I'm going to look for a, let me open the snare section. If I can't find a snare, I'll lay it with the rim shots. So I think it's layered with this, then look for a rim. So I'm going to layer this too. So this is my main rim shot, by the way. So I'm going to try and trace it out so I can hear it here. Then layer it. Reduce volume. Typically, I want to reduce volume of your layer, okay? So it shouldn't be as loud as your main element. Next, I want to trace out the other parts that come that it comes in at. So I think somewhere here. So again here and then. All right, so let's listen and see. So now let's adjust our sounds, reduce volume of the kick, increase our rim shots. Increase volume of our snare layer. Sometimes you may need to adjust the timing of your sound. Like this has a little bit of delay, so I'm going to just change it. The sample start. So we're listening. Reduce the volume. Next, we're going to listen out for the other elements we can hear. So next, it sounds more like an open heart or a heart. So I'm going to look for a heart right here. Close this open heart. Reduce the volume. Next, I can hear a high heart roll. Then, I think it's just open the piano roll. I can hear it somewhere here. So, to create a high heart roll, it's real easy. Just click on C5, highlight it, come here, then come down to tools, come down to chop, and then increase the time. Or reduce it to match the pattern here. So that's the more like the sound. Close that. Reduce the volume. If I turn it up. So you can even add some, you know, vibes to it by just reducing the the velocity. So next thing I can hear is a shaker. Now, we may not find that exact shaker, but we can just add, you know, a shaker loop pattern. Or, you know, if you have a, a single shaker sound, you can bring in there to try and copy the pattern as well. But I, I don't want to go too close to there, so I can just use a shaker. Then. And then I'll make it match my tempo. Now, this looks like it's supposed to be on 16 bars. I'm going to stretch it out. 16 bars. Then reduce the volume and listen. Okay, let's try 17 bars. Then I could just trim this out. This is due to the silence here. So that's why we're going all the way to um, 17 bars. So clean that up. Then add a shaker loop layer. Then I could just use the volume. So now we're going to balance it some more and even add more layers to make it to make the drum sound fuller. So let's add a layer. We're going to come down to percussions. Add this in here because if we hear the original, 
we could hear some you know percussions going on in the background there so Then we can add this, then layer it on this rim shot. Add this as well. Reduce the volume. So you can see now we have you know a nice sounding beat. If I turn on the vocals, that sounds with the original drums. Can't let these people get to me. I know you know I never dream. All right, so after you're done, you know, making a nice drum pattern, the next thing I recommend you do, although not necessary, is to add boss processing. So I'm going to select all of my drum, all of my drum elements right here. Select everything, then link them to the mixer by just pressing Command Shift and L. Then highlight everything by holding um, Command and just sweeping across, or you can hold Command Shift and click, you know, one by one. And then we want to come right here to the empty inserts, come down to track routing, then come down to route selected to this track only, which means all the drums will play through this track. So rename this to drum boss. So when I press play, you can see all the sounds are routed here. Now the reason why we need to do boss processing is because when they share a common effect like a compressor, a saturation plugin, they will, it will sound more glued together, heavier, you know, it's more defined. So I'm going to come right here, look for a compressor. You can use a third party compressor like the um, CLA 7.6. So let me load that up. Stereo. And then we have this right here. You don't want to over compress your drums, you know, where it starts getting to minus seven to minus 10. Most times between minus one to minus five is a good point to be on your drums. And the blue version of this plugin actually sounds a lot more aggressive. So you may want that character or you may want a slightly more relaxed vibe, okay? So I'm going to use the, the black one. You, and to get these numbers right, just adjust the input till it gets to the number you like it to be on. So now when you have that set, next thing you want to do is use an EQ to clean up any harsh frequencies. Then next you add a saturation plugin. Now for that, we're going to use FL Studio stock plugin, which is called Fruity Blood of a Driver. I really like this plugin. So you just simply come to the preamp right here, this button and increase it so it fits the vibe you want. In here that we have our drums going and you can use this for your own unique production you can take away the drum track and you can keep remixing maybe add chords to get more ideas but most times this is what i'll do if i'm lacking good ideas for creating drum tracks if you find this helpful like and follow for more